Hello friends, I am Dr. Rahul Mahadar. Today going to present uh, laparoscopic nissen's fundoplication step by step for hiatal hernia. 48 year old female patient presented with the volume reflux. Upper GI endoscopy revealed hiatal hernia with grade 1 GRD. There were no comorbidities in this patient and her BMI was 32.5. Manometry study in her revealed hypotensive alias with hiatal hernia and there were normal mobility of the esophagus. So plan in this patient is laparoscopic nissen's fundoplication. The patient and port position is as shown in the figure. The surgeon is standing in between the leg, two monitors at uh, two shoulder levers of the patient, anesthesia trolley at the head end and assistant standing on the left side of the patient. Hello friends. Now today we are going to discuss about the laparoscopic Nissan's fundoplication procedure, technical tips and tricks during the operation. Now after doing a diagnostic laparoscopy, we are going to put a Nathanson's retractor just below the zephy sternum and then we put the Nathanson's retractor and the left lobe of liver is retracted with the help of Nathanson's retractor. You can very well see here the large hiatal hernia the stomach is going into the chest and there is a big gap with a lateral port 5mm port at the anterior axillary line level just below the costal margin on the left side. This 5mm instrument will catch hold of the stomach and with these two hand instruments the pass placida approach is it's done here and you can see here with the help of a harmonic scalpel we are cutting the pars flaccida and the peritoneum over the right cross is also taken Small bites are taken with the harmonic scalpel and you can see here only try to catch hold of the uh, peritoneal over the crust and that is cut with the help of harmonic scalpel. Simultaneously hemostasis is achieved. And then ask the assistant to give a little traction and you can see here very well the peritoneal lining over the right crust and at this line you just take a small incision with the help of a harmonic scalpel and you will enter into the plane where you can preserve the lining over the right crust also maintained or the peritoneum or the uh, right crust is also maintained and then what you can enter inside it is just white structures or fascia that you need to just dissect laterally So 
here you can see the peri uh, the pleura right pleura you can see and you have to see that you should not injure the pleura or make a rent in a pleura and very gently you can dissect with the help of a harmonic as well as the left hand instrument simultaneously you can very well see the posterior vagus also Now ask the assistant to give traction towards the uh, right side of the patient and you can see the lateral attachments on the left side and you can see the peritoneum over it and you have to just catch hold of the peritoneum and just push the structures down and you will see the peritoneal lining over the left crust as well. Always try to maintain the peritoneal lining over the uh, crura on the left side. With the left hand instrument, you can just catch hold of this particular lining and then you can cut with the help of harmonic scalpel. Harmonic scalpel is quite handy for this particular operation and you can see here you are maintaining the lining over the uh, left crust and here you can see the anterior vagus and you have to push down the vagus and then go into the plane above that. So you are separating the esophagus, lower esophagus anteriorly while doing so you have to see the vagus and not to cause injury to the anterior vagus. Here are small vessels always. You have to cut these vessels with the help of harmonic scalpel to avoid the bleeding in this area. You can see the aorta posteriorly. Now you ask the assistant to catch hold of the OG junction specifically and just lift it up so that you will see the posterior vagus now and the uh, esophagus and below that you can make a posterior window. With the help of a left hand instrument, you just push the structures and dissect the structures and you will be making a window posteriorly. So rest of the dissection is carried out with the help of a harmonic scalpel. Gently you do the dissection with the help of harmonic scalpel so that you avoid the excessive bleeding in this area because small vessels are there and that need to be cut with the help of a harmonic scalpel. And your posterior vagus is above, you can very well appreciate that. And now you can put a umbilical tape around OG junction so that the maneuverability is become very easy with this traction of this umbilical tape around OG junction. So now ask the assistant to catch hold of this umbilical tape. and then you carry out the dissection 
trans hiatally. Now you can very well see the posterior vagus. You have to lift the posterior vagus above and below that you have to dissect and separate it from the avota. Now you can see avota posteriorly. Here while doing this dissection there are high chance that you can injure the pleura. So you have to be very cautious. You have to identify the structures properly. So for identifying structure as far as possible you have to avoid the bleeding in this area. So small bites of harmonic and you can dissect it. And posteriorly you can see the aorta. And now on the around left crust, the dissection is carried out. See here the peritoneal reflection and this peritoneal reflection need to be pushed so that you will get a plane in between esophagus and this peritoneal reflection. So slowly, small bite by bite, you can do this dissection. The traction and counter traction is the key for doing dissection in this area. As far as possible, maintain the uh, peritoneum over the left crust. So that while doing the crural suturing, it becomes very easy. So you can do the lateral dissection. Here also there are chances that you can injure the pleura on the left side. So try to avoid that. And all the attachments of lower esophagus with the crura is taken care of with harmonic scalpel and you can very well see now the avota down so slowly you can dissect all the structures there is the pericardium above so you have to just dissect in between that all small fibers are taken care of with the help of a harmonic scalpel. So now you have to judge how much intra-abdominal esophagus length is achieved. Still some attachments are there posteriorly that need to be cut. So with the help of a harmonic scalpel you can cut these fibers. and complete the dissection from the posterior side. All these attachments are flimsy attachments but small vessels are always there so try to avoid the bleeding. Now you can see with traction how much esophagus you have mobilized. So you have you have mobilized quite enough now so now we will measure the uh, how much our esophagus is mobilized with traction it should be approximately six to seven centimeters so this is the umbilical tape with marking of one centimeter each on it and we measure it so it is almost 6 centimeters 
we have mobilized with traction so you can very well see here one two three four five six six centimeters we have mobilized so then ask our system to leave the traction and without traction now you should measure the intra-abdominal esophagus length which is achieved and this is almost 3 centimeters below the crura so this is this dissection is sufficient now now we will take care of the short gastrics so at the lower end of the spleen at that level we start dissecting the uh, short gastric along the greater curvature of the stomach here I prefer the ligature So now ask your assistant to catch hold of the cut end and then with the help of a ligature you can cut along the greater curvature. See to it that you are not uh, going very near to the stomach because this can lead to ischemic injury later on. So you have to maintain the blood supply along the greater curvature. So now attachment along the greater curvature are taken care of with the help of a ligature avoid bleeding in this area otherwise the field becomes quite messy now the short gastric near the spleen you have to be very careful here if bleeding starts in this area then it becomes very difficult to uh, control that Techni technically very demanding so you have to be very careful ask your assistant to give little traction laterally and then with the help of a ligature or a bipolar first and then you can use the harmonic as well in this area so I am quite comfortable with the uh, ligature so there many a times you find little adhesions in this area 
So we have to take care of those additions. So the end point of dissection here is you should see both the crura and you can see the upper border of the pancreas as well. So here you can see that and now almost dissection is complete and you can very well see now the fundus wrap is taken to the posterior window and shoe shine maneuver is done so it's quite easily coming so here floppy nuisance is possible and see it is not going back so now we can first do the crural approximation here we are using it upon two zero sutures while doing this suturing you should see the entry point and exit point of the needle because there is a high chance that in this area you can injure the aorta below so you have to be very careful and here also the exit point you should see because caudate lobe of liver is always there that can lead to a bleeding and the field becomes quite messy so I always prefer to do a uh, figure of 8 suture for the crura so entry point and exit point is always here to see and then only proceed further I prefer to put three throws for the suture so that it will hold the suture at place. This I have learned from the legend of uh, hiatal hernia surgery, Dr. Roy Patankar sir. From him I have learned this. So with three throws of sutures it can hold there so there is no need of assistance. Now still I want to approximate further more so one more stitch I will take so three throws again and coral suturing is done.
So after cruel approximation, see to it that you are uh, not, it is not too tight. And then now here as the previous manometry is suggestive of a normal motility, we are going to do a nuisance fundoplacy nuisance fundoplication in this patient. So we try to get the wrap around the lower esophagus ask the assistant to catch hold of the uh, umbilical tape and you find that it is going back so still there is some traction is there on the stomach so we need to find out what is giving attraction to this particular area so there are few adhesions between pancreas and uh, posterior wall of the stomach so we need to cut that and we have to make this particular posterior part of a stomach free so we need to take care of these adhesions so ask the assistant to give traction and then with ligature we are trying to release these adhesions so you can see here the adhesions to do a floppy nissen the stomach should be completely free uh, on its posterior aspect and see to it that there is no bleeding otherwise this area becomes quite messy so you can see here some dense adhesions are there so these adhesions are cut with the help of a ligature and see here this splenic artery is coming into the picture so we have to try to avoid this splenic artery an injury to splenic artery as well so we are separating these adhesions so that the splenic artery also will be free from these adhesions can see here and appreciate and you can appreciate that this splenic artery is well maintained and there is no now you can see here the splenic artery now ask the assistant to catch hold of this traction around OG junction and then and you can see now it is not going back so now we can take a 360 degree flap around OG junction.
can see it is not going back. It is printed. So now take while taking sutures, go as laterally as possible and then take a 360 degree wrap. It's a floppy nissen, floppy flap. Now the second stitch from the stomach, then from the esophagus, and then again to the stomach, so that it will be fixed around the just above the OG junction. Now the third suture at the level of OG junction. Now this wrap is fixed to the right crew wrap. To avoid its migration into the chest. So I fix it to right crew wrap at this level. Now the second suture I always put posterior to the wrap and to the 
or decura like this so I fix the wrap at two places to avoid its migration in the post operative period So now almost procedure is done. So suction is done. And ask the anesthetist to put a Riles tube. And then the umbilical tape at the OG junction level that is taken out and removed. So this is now the final picture. Uh, under visualization we remove the Nathanson's retractor. See there is no bleeding.